Turn to Jess. Sir, this time last year you promised me that legislation would be um, before us by Christmas to give effect to EU Regulation 598 20, uh, 2014, uh, installing the IAA as the competent authority dealing with aircraft noise. We've had the years since of you telling us how they were the ones best placed to do that job, even though nothing is in place to uh, bring that any nearer to completion. My question is, is that still your preference? And when, in God's name, are we going to see legislation or a statutory instrument to give it effect? Minister, two minutes. Um, yeah, I'd like to thank Deputy Daly for the chance to answer and this question to update the House on this very important issue. And there is, as uh, Deputy Daly will be aware, a certain repetition about what's happening here today. In September 2016, I announced my intention to designate the Irish Aviation Authority as the competent authority under EU Regulation 598-2014 and so charge it with responsibility for managing aircraft noise. The proposed nomination of the authority for this function was in line with the approach in many other European member states, and it was broadly consistent with previous practice in assigning aviation regulatory functions to the IAA. This proposed approach was supported by legal advice at the time, and it was pursued by my department as the most straightforward way of activating the regulation and thus facilitating its timely implementation in Ireland, which is in everyone's interest. The function was to be assigned to the existing regulatory division in the IAA, and it was to be managed on a functionally independent basis from the commercial activities of the IAA in the provision of air navigation services. On foot of the most recent legal advices of senior counsel engaged by the offices of the Attorney General, it is clear that this approach is no longer advisable. Case law at European level has now led to a more strict interpretation of what constitutes functional independence within an organisation. The necessary staffing, reporting, accountability and funding arrangements required to meet the new benchmark of functional independence simply made the IAA no longer a viable option. In effect, the requirements to ensure the independent exercise of the competent authority would not be consistent with the principles of good governance of the IAA as a whole. I have already instructed my department to re-engage with the Department of Housing, Planning and Local Government and Department of Communications, Climate Action and the Environment as a matter of urgency to consider the possible options for assignment of this role to an existing state body. I will talk to my two Cabinet colleagues on the subject and I will advise the de Deputy. Arising from the latest legal advice, the Minister, Deputy will sorry. also be Minister, interested... Minister, we're already over time. Sorry, I'll just the balance, this. No, the be balance. aware that I now intend to implement Minister, the legislative changes, Minister, I'm being, mainly... Listen, I'm being too lenient, and that's and the problem. probably only through primary oh, sorry, legislation. Minister. Okay. If you want, the balance will be in the uh, report. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll use it in the second part. Yeah, well, if you, yeah, well, it's a very should, important. Perhaps we should adopt that practice. Okay. Well, Daily. I feel almost embarrassed for the minister and the unenviable position that he's in because this is a catastrophic failure on the part of the Department of Transport. I could paper my house with the amount of replies I've got telling me that the IAA were best placed to be the competent authority to implement this regulation. In June, you told me that the Attorney General at that time was drafting and about to sign off on the seventh version of draft regulations to give that effect and you expected that to be in a week's time. Now that was the new Attorney General who obviously has stood on his, its head the advice of the old Attorney General and now we find out a year and a half down the road we're kind of in the lap of the gods as to what alternative authority will be put in place to deal with aircraft noise, uh, a regulation that was supposed to protect aircraft communities, but a regulation which we know that the DAA intend to use or hijack to undermine the conditions restricting aircraft noise. It's a huge issue for the aircraft communities and they will be absolutely shocked to their core to, to hear the response given Minister, today and Minister, I do feel sorry for you having to give it. Minister Ross, one minute. Don't, don't feel sorry for me. Uh, please, I, uh, I am frustrated. I am extremely uh, disturbed by the fact that this has taken so long, and I do apologise for it. Uh, I cannot do anything else, though, that, but follow the legal advice that I am being given. And the fact that it has taken a long, a long period of time is something which uh, is not 
something which I would like to see repeated on other issues in this House. Uh, the Tiana General had previously, had previously advised that the legislation could be substantially implemented by a statutory instrument under the European Communities Act. Arising from the latest legal advice, the Deputy will be interested to be aware that the, I now intend to implement the legislative changes mainly and probably wholly through primary legislation. The, this is a result of legal questions which were raised in the drafting process and took account of developments since previous advice was given, not least that there are matters already before the courts in relation to the new runway at Dublin Airport. The latest legal advice is that the more secure approach now is to proceed on the basis of primary legislation. Make that. I clearly have no option but to allow this advice, to follow this advice. While I am deeply frust frustrated at the delay that this gives rise to, it will of course mean that the House will have the opportunity to examine the implementing measures in detail. Final supplementary. Yeah, um, I mean, I think it's, it's an, an added shock, I suppose, in this scenario is the fact that we actually highlighted to your department the potential conflict of interest or some of the decisions that were being taken in Europe that might lead to the IAA not being the best choice in that regard. We're obviously very happy that primary legislation will be the vehicle uh, in order to deliver these, these changes, but it will be of huge concern to the airport communities to find out that as of, of yet, you haven't pinpointed an alternative competent authority. Last week, two Garda cars arrived at the homes of travelling families operating and sit, living on DAA lands with an eviction notice for this week telling them to get off that land. There's no alternative accommodation pinpointed for these people as of yet. So the runway development is gathering on a pace. The lives of the surrounding communities are being massively impacted and we don't have any legislative structure in place for a competent authority that was there to benefit them. It's incredibly worrying and I would ask, Minister, you did kindly offer before to meet those travelling families. At the time I said it wasn't necessary given the, the length of time that's gone on now and the very precarious position Therein, I would now like you to ask you again to meet them. It's, it's quite urgent now. Thank you. Minister? Um, I will, yes. I'll do that. I'll meet them, certainly, if they, if they have a, a, a cause which, uh, in which I can assist them in any way. I will be happy to meet them, yeah. The, the question about uh, who's going to be the next competent authority, I don't know the answer to that question at the moment. I know that we're moving with a great deal of speed now and urgency to look at the various alternatives which I suppose were also looked at previously and look, looked at before. Uh, these obviously would include uh, not the IAA any longer but include the ABP, would include, uh, would include the uh, EPA and other bodies who, or some sort of mixture. But it is very, very important that we do this, we do it urgently but also that we get it right and it is open to challenge. I sympathise fully, it's not open to challenge, I sympathise fully with the uh, difficulties of the local communities and I think the Deputy would be aware, I've met large numbers of them, and the uncertainty in which they find themselves at the moment as a result of this, uh, this, this legal difficulty is something which is unacceptable and I hope will not be repeated. Okay, Deputy Daly.